그 일단 그 제임스 본드 영화 이렇게 시리즈에 대해서 얘기할 수 있게 돼서 되게 영광이고요. 이렇게 여러분들 실제 뵈니까 되게 기쁘네요. 네, 다 반갑습니다. 네. First of all, I'm really honored to be here to have the opportunity to talk about the Bond series with you all. Um, it's so great to meet you guys um, and uh, nice to meet you all. I'm here in Seoul, Sunday morning, South Korea. And I grow, I grow up in South Korea. That, and when I was in elementary school, in, it was in 1970s, we little kids, the boys always talking about Bond car or the, and 그다음에 어마어마한 악당들, 상어 이빨, 조스 뭐 이런 얘기 맨날 했었는데. And we would always talk about the the heinous villains in the film, the jaws, the the shark tooth. 근데 이제 더블 세븐 직접 만드신 분들과 얘기한다고 하니까 되게 좀 신기하고 흥분이 되고요. But it's, so it's quite amazing and surprising to talk with people who are, have actually created the Bond films. 그 우리 아버지는 이제 예를 들어 뭐 아버지랑 아버지 친구들이 그션 커널리랑 로저 모를 놓고 누가 더 좋은 제임스 본드냐를 갖고 싸우긴 했지만 지금은 그런 시대가 아니잖아요. So in my parents generation my father and his friends would always fight about who the best bond is between Sean Connery and Roger Moore but I think we live in a different time now. 우리 시대의 본드는 역시 다니엘이죠. 여기 미스터 크레이그 와 있어서 가지고 너무 기쁩니다. And of course Dan Daniel is the only bond of our generation so I'm very happy to be with uh, you here today. 그 이런 류의 토크 하면은 보통 제일 마지막에 질문하는 걸 제가 바로 처음 질문하고 싶은데. 네. 네. So usually the question that I'm about to ask right now comes at the very end of conversations like this. How, how was your 15 years as a James Bond? It, it was quite <laughs> long. So it was longer than the, the boy growing up during 12 years in Richard Linklater, the boyhood. Yeah. This is this is you know 15 years of your life. So looking back, how how does it all feel to you? Well, I think I think you said the right. I mean, exactly. I grew up. I mean, I grew up in so many ways, um, professionally, um, in that period. I mean, I th I mean, I, I I was I was working before Bond. I was doing movies I wanted to do. You know that, that I that I was I was enjoying working with lots of wonderful directors and and and, and very creative people, um, but when I started Bond, my sort of the learning curve sort of went like that. <laughs> I knew some of the movie industry. I knew so, how 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 a little bit about how movies were made. I, I you know so I, I've been asked how what the last fifteen years were like. I'm I'm still trying to process it to tell you the truth. Yeah, mm. um, actually, it's it's a James Bond. It's it's. And also the actor's job is always very something physical, very physical challenge every time. Mm -hmm. So the casino, for example, the, the in the opening sequence of the, the casino royal, the, the mm -hmm. park row and the theatre. It's like parkour where you're yeah. running around and that yeah. was you know 15 years ago for you. Yes, it was. And at least a little easier 15 years ago than it would be today, that's for sure. Um <laughs> I know. Well, you know, a lot was well, a lot was created. I think about my character in that scene. I mean, as and you know, it was it was directed brilliantly, and it was it was it was conceived. I mean, the stunt team we had with Gary Powell and all his guys, and uh, uh, and with Martin, put together a, a, a really unique and unusual scene. Um, we had Sebastian, who was a uh, the real deal, a park, uh, someone, uh, you know, uh, uh, one of the inventors of parkour, who moved like silk like oil around the set um and it's something i don't do and the sort of i think really the kind of the scene that really sums it up is the scene where i sort of bash through the wall in it um which was a kind of one of those last minute things uh, invented on the day by 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 gary powell um and he just said to me i want you to run through this wall and i was like what <laughs> he went you need to run through this wall he said i oh, don't worry i'll score it and I was like, you'll score it. What does that mean? <laughs> he just took a knife and just sort of put some hacks in it like that. He said, you'll be fine. Run straight through it. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was like, I think it kind of created my character. A lot of uh, for the people watching, you know, made, made it very clear who my character was. The character 
그 디파인 했다는 그 말이 맞는 것 같아요. 처음 그 봤을 때 정말 쇼킹했었어요. 그러니까 양복을 빼입고 뭐 이렇게 뺀질거리는 본드카가 아니라 피랑 땀이랑 막 더러운 먼지에 범벅이 돼 갖고 뛰어다니는 제임스 본드를 처음 이제 보게 되면서 되게 쇼킹했었어요. 그래서 이게 당신의 시대가를 여는 거구나. 다니엘 크레이그의 제임스 본드 시대를 딱 어나운스 한다고 할까 막 그런 느낌이었는데 이제 그게 무려 15년이 지나버렸네요. 다섯 편을 하면서. So I think it's really true that that sequence sort of defines your character. I remember when I saw it, I was so shocked because it's not your usual James Bond in a tuxedo looking very sleek. This James Bond is covered in sweat, blood, and just dirt all around. Um, and it really felt like you were announcing the beginning of your James Bond, um, this new generation um, that would span five films over 15 years. And the 15년간... 그 다섯 개 제임스 본드 영화가 이제 이제 요거 자체가 따로 또 레, 레거시가 돼 버렸잖아요. 그리고 그 제일 마지막 거를 이제 그 바바라랑 캐리가 이제 만들게 된 것인데 캐리 입장에서도 되게 여러 가지 뭐랄까 그 프레셔, 중압감 같은 게 되게 본드의 어떤 마지막을 그린다는 게 이거 본드가 죽는다는 거 얘기해도 되는 거죠? 우리 토크에서 이거 다 스포일링 아닌 거죠? So, you know, these five films, your 15 years, they are now leaving, you know, their own legacy. And of course, the final film in the series, um, you know, Carrie and Barbara, you both, um, you know, created it together. And I'm sure, Carrie, you must have felt a lot of pressure um, creating the final, final film of, of Daniel Craig's James Bond. Yeah. How was it that Carrie, that maybe as a director, is quite challenging? That this kind that you have to maybe you are the, the only one or the, the very first director who is dealing with the death or the, the final moment of the James Bond, that iconic historic character in cinema history. How, how, how was your feeling? It, it was something that had been um, uh, sort of in the works before. So, so when I first met with Barbara and Daniel, it was an idea they'd been playing around with already. So uh, more the, the, the challenge was then, you know, as you mentioned, it's, it's, it's the final film. So it's like, how do, we, how do we earn that kind of ending? How do we earn you know, a character who has survived the impossible so many times to finally put him in a situation that it's inescapable? And um, that, that was the main challenge, I think. And uh, um, you know, I didn't really think too much about the pressure of it being the last bomb because we were so focused on just getting that story right. You have any time. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of larger kind of like looming, you know, reality just was just too, too much, you know. Carrie's very brave, you know, he, uh, nothing, nothing daunts him. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when I was watching the Spectre, there was a very interesting dialogue in the movie during the car action the, the, between the Daniel and the, the uh, Money Penny, Money mm -hmm. Penny. Yeah, 그, 거기서 이제 뭐, 그 카액션 하다 말고 이제 통화하다가 머니패니가 그 옆에 뭐 남자친구랑 얘기하니까 뭐 누가 남친이야? 그랬더니 뭐 우리가 이게 그 소위 말하는 이게 예, 우리는 이거 라이프라고 부른다. 다음에 너도 한번 트라이를 해봐라 라는 대사가 있거든요. 예. Uh, so in Spectre, you know, there's a scene um, in a, in a, during a car chase where um, you know, money penny is on the phone and you know, uh, uh, James Bond is asking, is it your boyfriend? And she's, she says, oh, it's something called life. You should try it out too. Yeah, it's called life, James. You should try it sometime. It was very interesting dialogue. And the, 그, 여기서 말하는 그 life라는 게한 번도 없었는데, James Bond가. 근데 이번 영화에서 No Time to Die에서 그거를 하는 것 같아요. 이 영화의 특히 후반부에. 다니엘이 그 마침내 자기 딸을 만나게 되고 우리 팬들이 한 번도 보지 못한 그런 순간을 이제 캐리가 찍어 가는 상황이 된 건데. Yeah. And you know that sense of life is I feel like something that James Bond has never had. Um, but in this film, No Time to Die, it seems like we're seeing that part of the character, a character that is living his life, especially towards the end when he meets his daughter and everything. And I feel like that's something that um, James Bond fans have never been able to see before. And I think that's a very um, special thing that you know everyone has created uh, um, with you, Carrie. So James Bond, I wanted to see the scene of his life, but I didn't see it anymore. So I really wanted to see James Bond changing, changing the baby's diapers, but you know, she was a little too old for that. 
for that to be in the film. 어쨌든 제임스 본드의 그 가족 처음 가정 가족 아빠가 처음 나온 건데 <웃음> 뭐 어떻게 접근한 거예요? 다니엘과 캐리한테 궁금해요. 그 이런 것 모습은 사실 처음인 건데 마지막이자 mm. 처음인 건데. Yeah. Mm. So in this film, you really see um, James Bond in this family and home setting him as a father. And I want, I'm wondering, uh, question to you, Daniel and Carrie, how you guys approach this side of James Bond that we've never really seen before. Wow, um, that's good. It's, I don't really remember what we sort of talked about. I mean, it was, it, the, can, Carrie, you'll have to help me out because we had the set already because Carrie had shot on it and it was a very, I mean, it's a, you know, um, it's um, um, Madeline's um, childhood home. Yeah, that home was quite impressive. Yes, yeah, yeah it nearby, really was. Yeah. Nice break and, yeah. yeah, and I'm very much part of the movie, the character in the movie, and, and, but, but also the sort of impact of meeting the child for the first time. We had this sort of talk, conversation about her not wanting me to think it was her child. Uh, we wanted that to be, she was very clear. She, it was something to do with her defense um, of, of, of the child that she didn't want me to know it was, I was the father. Though it was clear, I think to everybody, I was the father. Um, um, and, it, and, and, and the kind of, it was, I mean, you set up kind of the child's bedroom up, upstairs already. So it felt like it was very much part of, it, 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 was, a, it, was, a, it was a home for him in a way. There was a moment in the movie I felt where that's where he could end up living. Yeah, yeah there's, um, there's no father in the beginning, right? It's just it's just Madeline and her mother in the beginning. Mr. White is absent, and uh, you know, I guess you're the only male we ever see in that house. Um, but there's right. that. Oh, a problem happened. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but he's not exactly a father figure, though, is he? <laughs> 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 uh, you know, it's like you know, old father I, I figure. Like you know, we we wanted to avoid anything that felt too saccharine or too like over the top. That's why we, you know, when when you first meet the little girl, she doesn't even say anything. She just sort of knocks over a, right. a slinky, you know. Which you know, it's, how, how do you react to this figure who suddenly mm -hmm. appears? Yeah, that was, that was quite. That. 그게 인상적이었어요. 그게 약간 어색한 듯하면서도 자연스럽더라고. 어, 제임스 본드가 저럴 수도 있구나라는 생각이 들면서 본드 걸이 아니라 자기 딸과 이렇게 와 있는 그 약간 이상한 어색한 모먼트. 그게 참 신기하고 재밌었지. 네. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I just thought that sequence really interesting um, because it felt very awkward, but also natural at the same time to see James Bond, not with a Bond girl, but, you know, with his own daughter. Uh, so there was a sense of awkwardness that just flowed, uh, flowed throughout um, that scene, which I found uh, great. What were you going to say, Barbara? No, no, I was just going to say what I loved about when you referenced in the script when when Madeline won't let him know it's his daughter, what I loved about that also is that, yes, she's being defensive, but also he hasn't earned being the father. No. And that, to me, that emotional thread underneath it, the sort of double meaning that by the end, it's such mm -hmm. a big moment when she confirms it. It's like, you've proven that you, you could be her father, so you've earned it, which, I mean, as a woman, I found that really moving, you know? Uh, yeah. So I thought it was brilliant writing. And also I have to say, Linus shooting that, that was a very difficult set because we, <laughs> we had to replicate it. I mean, well, Linus, you should talk about where we shot that in Norway and then- we, Exactly, we used it in the beginning of the film, obviously, and we spent a lot of time trying to find a, <clears throat> a house that looked that way when we were scouting, but it was very specific where mm. it had to be, you know, on a lake and all. And also at, at the same time, the, the movie has also the 뒤에 아까 딸 얘기하고 뭐 기존 007에서 못본 것도 있다고 했지만 또그 그간의 역사 그 레거시를 그대로 온 엄청난 정말 007다운 액션 장면들도 있잖아요. 특히 그그 그 그런 건또뭐 아주 도입부에 엄청났었는데 영화에서. 네. And yeah, so, you know, we talked about how we really saw a new side of James Bond in this film. But of course, this film also reflects the long history and legacy that all James Bond films um, have had, which, you know, of course, are the great action sequences, um, especially in the opening. We see so many what, great action scenes. Was it, was it uh, Matera? Matera? Or the, 
in Italy, Italy the yeah. Lo yeah. Yeah, location was amazing. And mm. all those crazy action is based on that, that very unique location of the town. So the Charyong Dam, the DP, Linus, I want to ask you to ask me how to do the locations. The locations are not able to do the locations. So I want to ask Linus, you know, how you and Carrie approached, um, you know, all these locations. How are you able to um, sort of what was your approach and understanding these locations? Because I feel like a lot of the action scenes in Matera, um, they were only possible because you had a complete mastery over what this um, location was like. Hmm. Yeah, what do you think, Kerry? <laughs> mm. I mean, it's uh, it's a combination also of that, uh, you know, as we follow Bond and uh, Madeline up there, it's also a very picturesque setting, you know. So the location is not only like great for really violent and hard action, but it's also uh, something that, uh, you know, gave us an opportunity for doing something very romantic as we introduce the city. And the change over once he goes to the graveyard is, I think, is, is quite interesting how it suddenly goes, that same city that was so beautiful and, and sort mm. of picturesque becomes like something very harsh and hard. Foreboding, yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. Mm. And, how, how did you shoot that crazy, the motorcycle jump? So there's, and then... yeah, there landing on the, the small scale. It was unbelievable. It, 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 it was, was a... just all by visual effect or... No, 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 no. no. no, no real, uh, yeah. The yes. only thing, the only thing painted out is the ramp. Yeah, um, yeah. Because the ramp was made into the balustrade, so the ramp, so the ramp went up the balustrade. So that was the only thing that painted out. But the jump is, is, all, is all for real. Yeah. Wow. Lots of rehearsals, right? It's lots of rehearsals, lots of uh, testings. Yeah, we, yeah. But on the day of the shoot, the wind speed was very high. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, so. And so they had to wait for the wind speed to drop and it was still pretty high when they jumped because he got so much air that he was pushed. So it was, I mean, it was, I mean, it was heart, heart in mouth for the whole thing, but he nailed it. It was beautiful. I think he did it a couple of times, yeah. right, Barbara? Carrie. Was that right? Yeah, we did it a few times. Three times. He jumped it a couple. Was that how many? three, right, Carrie? Three times. Well, he gets paid each time. <laughs> it was... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, in the sky fall, there is a, a, a very mm. iconic falling down shot, which is mm. beautiful. But this is more yeah. beautiful right. jump up, rising up moment. Very. I remember that I remember No Time to Die. I remember that shot. 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 I remember that I think for me, the one shot that I would you know remember for a long time is that motorcycle shot of when it just jumps up and soars into the air. And Aston Martin is the, always the, the, this quite relatively small, so it's very good to learn in, in the small Italian town, all, mm -hmm. all those alleyways, and it is also amazing. How many days do you spend there before all those crazy car chase sequences? In the, uh, was it in a total like second unit was there for at least three weeks before us yeah, yeah. Um, three weeks. we had three weeks we had about 10 days to shoot you know our our part of it and they were shooting on imax as well yeah second yeah. Unit. yeah yeah everything everything's, everything's on, IMAX. on imax, IMAX. Yeah. wow yeah i think i think the imax camera is slightly bigger than the the aston martin <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In fact, we had to put two uh, IMAX cameras. When you remember when we, shooting, Mark, when we shot you and, <laughs> and Leah, we had to put and two in order to get balance. Yeah. Yeah. We had to yeah. measure the road too, because we yeah. had to measure when the camera was in a hostess tray position, yeah. it sticks out like three or four feet. Yeah. So with fast yeah. part and the width of the, the IMAX yeah. camera, we had to make sure wow. the, 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 uh, the, the forgiveness we had on either side of these walls, you know, was, was minimal, right? Wow. <laughs> yeah. I heard only that there, there, there is only Six or seven IMAX camera in the world, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and exactly. they're all loud. Yeah. They're, they're all louder than the actor. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. three of them you you guys destroyed. <laughs> did we get to any? No, yeah, I wanted to, but we didn't. Yeah. We didn't manage yeah. to smash. Yeah, we did our best. Yeah. Break it, you <laughs> <by. laughs> They kept, they kept going, going, didn't they? Right. Amazingly. Right. Anyway, the tone, la, denga, modern mood, la, denga, action, 그런 것들 다 특히 그 시퀀스의 컬러가 정말 
아름다웠던 것 같아요. Yeah. yeah, I feel like in that sequence, the tone, the mood, and all, all the action scenes were spectacular. And I really thought um, the color was especially great um, in the Kuda sequences. Yeah, 그리고 이제 yeah. 우리 그 공공치 우리 다니엘한테 칭찬받는 너 엑셀런트하다고 칭찬받은 또 우리 딱 3주 훈련 받고 온또 우리 그그 에이전트가 나오잖아요. And also, you know, we have, you know, the the agent who only trained for three weeks, and then, you know, um, you know, the uh, James Bond compliments her on everything. You're excellent. And 그그그 그, 그 캐릭터가 아마 영화 후반에 다시 한 번쯤 나와주길 기대했던 관객들이 많았을 텐데요. 그 어땠었어요? 처음부터 그렇게 작전을 그 아나랑 그거를. 그 캐릭터에 대해서 그렇게 한번 작전을 짰었던 건가요? 뭐 물론 당연히 작전을 짰겠지만 그그 네, 그 인물이 되게 됐을 궁금해요. 이제 뭐 이후에 제임스 본드에서 또뭐 시리즈에서 어떻게 되는 것인지 뭐 사람들이 많이 궁금할 것 같은데. 네. And I feel like a lot of people in the audience might have wanted a poem to sort of come back. And I so I'm curious what the approach or and strategy was for that character and maybe if she has a part in um in a James Bond film in the future? <laughs> that's, a barber, that's a barber question. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I'll, I'll jump in. Well, the part was always small. Anna made it something very special. So, I mean, it's all down to Anna, really, that the reason that the part sort of is, has, I mean, you know, so much, so much of it is down to Anna. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, but it was always only ever, you know, we were just very lucky to get her right, Carrie. I mean, it was just, uh, she, she she didn't have much to go on when when you when you spoke to her about it. So it just was supposed to be a fun fun little cameo for a couple of weeks. That, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah, that was the year. The action scenes, the color tone, and all that stuff. All of that mood. Because it was so dark. 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 It was of summer and you know that's yeah. all I guess due to the cinematography. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For example, the, yeah, for example, the uh, the Beast of No Nation, the, the, your previous works, Carrie, but that movie also has a, such a unique color tone, which is very beautiful. And this time also the the movie, the yogi yogi Cuba sequence 같은 경우도 되게 색조 아름다웠는데 리누스한테 물어보고 싶어요. 거기 그 시퀀스만의 어떤 다른 어프로치가 있었던 건지 세계 대해서. Yeah, and so the Kuba sequence has such a great color scheme, and so I want to ask Linus if you had a particularly different approach to that sequence in terms of the color mm. and everything else. Yeah, you know, like throughout the film, we try to vary the colors as well and apply different colors for different moods that would reflect different emotions of the film. And part, you know, part, part of the objective was just to like really try to. Uh, get the audience to be get sort of an, an enchantment or like let the audience like see exotic environments that you perhaps had never been to and that just kind of could look that way or could look in an exotic way and i think we had a little bit of discussions about how to differentiate between jamaica and cuba because it's obviously uh, they're very close together but you want the feel to be different and I think the the base of the Cuba sequence uh, action sequence is that you want it to feel like exotic and kind of kind of sexy city, you know, and a nice dark vibe in there and um, mysterious. I think and part of me feels like we we did something that is a little bit like Hitchcocky. I think with the because of the whole surreal uh, situation that occurs with this, you know, with the, with the eye and then with with Bond being in there, getting in the spotlight of that whole thing. Mm. There's some sort of Hitchcock-y uh, tone, I think, as well there. But, you know, yeah, like- I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. We were trying to, you know, Bond has been on his own, you know, for some, time, some, mm. some years, you know, and, mm. and this is him re-entering the world and re-entering it smack dab into the middle of a, of a you know, a specter. Yeah. You know, yeah. Blowout. And to, to me, you know, like uh, Cuba by night is also like you, I like to like think of it also as you want to like ground it in reality. So you could use, it's similar to actually like 
you know, Korea actually, or, or Hong Kong, maybe like at night, you know, like you have fluorescent tubes that are like those cool white tubes you could work with. So that's one element. Then you could have like warm tubes. So you could have really cold tubes or you could have like neon and stuff, but we wanted it to feel like simple and not like overly lit, like, uh, like Hong Kong or something, but Cuba has, is much more like sparsely lit at night, I think, and more shadows and, and darker, and so, so, so we kind of um, also with a you know set decorator we went through like how could we create the light here in order and, to make yeah uh, and in the in the middle of the, the mood that tone you know, we met the character the Nomi right yeah Nomi yeah so she she appears it 되게 인상적으로 등장을 하게 되는데 uh, 그 그녀와의 작업이 어떤 느낌이었는지 되게 다니엘한테 궁금하고요. 원래 뭔가 뭔가 야릇한 그러니까 에로틱한 무드가 될것 같지만 사실 그게 아니잖아요. 또 제임스 본드도 이미 그걸 알고 있었고 어떻게 보면 더블 그 넘버를 그 쉐어하는 또 다른 어나더 더블 오 에이전트인데 네, 그, 그 노미와의 작업이 되게 좀 궁금해요. 다니엘하고 비슷한 느낌이에요. And so that character makes such an impressive entrance. And I'm curious, Daniel, how it was like um, working with her, especially in that scene, because it, it, it begins you know, with this sort of erotic atmosphere, but then of course, very quickly, um, it turns to something completely different where James Bond is facing an agent that shares the same, the same number. Um, and so I'm wondering what it was like um, for that scene. It was... Uh, Lashana's first day, so that was that was she had a she had a big scene to do. Is that right? That's right, Carrie. Right? It was her first, first first scene, scene. first day. day. Um, but she, I mean, she nailed it. I mean, I, I mean, I, I think I, I love the scene. I love this. I love how it starts. I love how it feels like um, it's a sort of throwback to a previous Bond time, and we're in Jamaica, and he meets a a beautiful woman. And they go back to the house, and you think, and then it just it becomes her moment and she introduces herself and she you know she uh you really you really get to discover who she is very quickly and i like i like that i like the fact that you discover how strong she is and how um um and when she says she's 007 i feel like in a way he's he's yeah of course he's upset but also she's a good 007 you know i mean she's she's a She's a, she's a good um, she's a good replacement for a 007. So I, I, she had to be she had to feel like that. It couldn't just be a, um, a sort of a gag. It had to feel like it had weight, and Lashana brought that. Yeah. Um, 정말 그 신을 보면서 시대가 변했다는 느낌 받게 되거든요. 그 이게 음, 바버라나 이제 캐리도 아마 그런 맥락을 갖고서 거기 접근했을 것 같은데. 어, 똑같은 역사적인 어떤 007의 히스토리가 쭉 이어오지만 어, 시대의 변화에 따라가고 있다는 거, 이긴 오랜 프랜차이즈가. And that scene really made me think about how this film and this franchise is sort of changing with the times. And I think this is something that I'm sure Barbara and Carrie, you guys have thought about while making this film, um, where you know you are continuing the very long history of James Bond, but you're also adapting the franchise so that it follows how the times are changing as well. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think you know the Bond films obviously changed significantly when we hired Daniel Craig because he became, you know, he reinvented the character for the 21st century and um, made him far more human, you know, as, as you mentioned, Bong, you know, uh, from Casino Royale, you know, he had the blood and the, the grittiness, uh, but also the emotional life, you know, he, he gave us an insight into Bong's emotional life and, his, and the, he's allowed the character to evolve over these films. And, um, and it was very much, you know, uh, when Carrie came on board, you know, he really focused a lot on, on Bond's emotional evolution in this film and, you know, culminating in the end, which I think is really powerful. It, it you know, his death had to be meaningful. It couldn't be, uh, you know, a suicide mission. He, that was a big challenge, wasn't it, Carrie, was to come up with the circumstances of his death had to, um, be something that you you know he, 
was an evolution that something he couldn't have gotten out of but had to have a big emotional impact right yeah um i think also there's a great um opportunity and advantage with daniel's films because they're connected narratively so the character has an opportunity <laughs> to evolve as well and you know a lot of times in, in previous bonds you know typically in a story a character goes through some sort of realization or change right in a story but oftentimes in these kind of films the character remains the same but with daniel's you're allowed to see that evolution you're allowed to see you know the hero's journey uh spread out over five films and and you know the different people he encounters and how that changes him and you know running through this gauntlet this experience of being a 007 agent how how you know in this final chapter how it ends in a way that hopefully you know is satisfying in terms of what we want out of the heroes um who are going to protect us yeah who well prince has a ten and you keep doing on their door loan looks at it man to eat daniel craig or james bond to man or the ship on you and you got to on at his own my큰 에픽과드 같은 긴 그건데 그두 가지가 하여튼 다 엔딩에 담아내는 되게 장대한 어떤 마무리였기 때문에 여러 가지 고민들이 정말 많아, 많았을 것 같아요. 그러니까 전체 60년 프랜차이즈를 다 반영하면서 동시에 또 데니엘의 또 제임스 본드를 또 마무리하는 그두 가지 미션이 다 있었, 다그두 가지 미션을 다 해낸 어떤 영화의 후반부였다는 생각이 든단 말이죠. 네. And you know, so this film, uh, this franchise is now in, in its 60th year, um, and that's such a great achievement. But also, you know, it's 15 years with Daniel um, as James Bond, and that's also, you know, a very long period. It's quite epic. And I feel like, um, you know, this film had the very difficult challenge of reflecting the entire 60 years of James Bond's history, while also making sure that this is a grand swan song for um, Daniel as well. And so you had, you know, those two missions. And I think the ending of this film really accomplishes all the challenges that um, this film had to um, face. face. 근데 뭐 미사일이 그 제임스 본드 제임스 옆에서 미사일이 뻥 터졌지만 뭐 제임스가 죽지 않은 거라고 말하는 사람들도 있던데. But I read that although the missiles you know blew up the island that James Bond is actually not dead. <laughs> Fan theory? Oh, don't tell Daniel that. We haven't really sprung that on him yet. We're waiting to talk to him about that. <laughs> so... 모르겠어요. <laughs> How how would he how would he escape? <laughs> Tell me. How would he escape? Tell me. You're still James Bond. You're doing James Bond's job now, so he's it never ends actually. Agent, like top four spy action, the genre,라고 해야 될까? 뭐 프랜차이즈가 사실 많이 있잖아요. 뭐뭐 이제 뭐 이제 우리끼리 한 얘기죠. 뭐 제이슨 본 시리즈도 있고 뭐 미션이 파서블 뭐 그렇지만 이 더블 세븐이 가장 오래된 또 전속으로 오랫동안 지속해 왔었던 프랜차이즈인데 이것만의 차이점은 그 차별점은 뭘까요 더블 세븐만의 뭐그긴 네, 스토리 말고도 그냥 현재 이 21세기에 네, 이, 이, 이 더블 세븐이 하나의 장르로서 프랜차이즈로서 뭐 이건 뭐 바바라나 캐리나 다뭐다할수 있는 질문인 것 같은데요. 네. So you know there are a lot of uh, you know films in this spy action thriller genre. You know just you know there's you know the Bourne series, Mission Impossible, but you know the James Bond franchise is truly the one with the longest history and the one that seems to have been most popular internationally. And I guess this is a question for all of you: where what do you think is really distinct about James Bond? Not aside from its long history, what is it about this? Um, this franchise that sort of makes it distinct in the 21st century. It's these guys. It's Barbara and Michael. Um, uh, I mean, I mean, taking on uh, whether um, from their father, um, uh, from Cubby Broccoli, um, but you know, remaining um, independent in a world that wants to sort of. Um, you know, make things into uh, franchises into, um, I don't know, they've never diluted it. They've always kept it pure. They've always kept it event cinema. 
It's never been less than that. Um, maybe it's not always worked, but it's always been wonderful to see a spectacle, um, at something that's that 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 has got a conversation going generationally amongst families. Uh, whether it's about the the theme song, whether it's about the locations, whether it's about who plays Bond, um, it's like it's it's it has you know it 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 ignites people's imagination and and it's their you know it's their stewardship of this of of it that has that has kept it going. It's like um, you know they've kept just about managed to keep out studio interference. They've, uh, they've, they've, they've made them, once the movies get up, they're independent movies. Nobody gets involved except for the creative people who are involved with that, uh, that, are, that are making them. And that, that's, a, that's unusual for movies of this size uh, or any movie. So um, it's them. It's, that, you know, it's them and their family that have, that have kept it that, like that. Um, I mean, what I was gonna say is that the, it's been the creatives that have kept this going since the very beginning. I mean, when you look at the, you know, the original team of, you know, Terrence Young and Ken Adam and John Barry doing the music and, you know, Richard Maybaum, the screenwriter. And so I think, you know, with each film, we try to get the very, very best, um, you know, the best actor. I mean, you know, Sean Connery started it and Daniel Craig's doing it now. I mean, we get the best actors. I mean, to have, look at the people on this Zoom. I mean, you know, you've got the creme de la creme of you know Carrie Fukunaga and Lena Sangren. You know, it's um, it's always you know we we've been very privileged to be able to to work with the best people and to, as my father used to say, get the best people and then create an environment where they can do their best work. And I think that's kind of been the you know the 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 plan since the beginning. You know that he that he instigated. So I, I would say it's down down to having the best and here they are <laughs> on this Zoom. <laughs> I say like Daniel, I think uh, it, it was uh, incredible for me to work on such a big production, but it's at the same time as it is like the biggest production, it's really run by Michael and Barbara uh, in a very intimate and personal way that, um, you know, uh, is, is, is very, like it, it makes us feel like a, a very unique and collaborative team between uh, the ones who decides uh, eventually and uh, and and all all of the rest of the crew that tries to be as creative as possible but uh, it's it's it feels like every film always is unique that way that it doesn't try to like mimic others or do something that others have done or uh, which may not always be the case in other films i think I don't know what I can add uh, that they haven't already said, but you know, I, I I do agree with you know, the fact that you know Barbara and and Michael have run this like a family, like a small family operation, means that the that there's a personal uh, um, level to the choices that are made that wouldn't happen with the sort of I'm trying to think of the right way to say it, but like in a studio, there's a lot of there's a lot of franchises that are driven by a kind of lowest common denominator kind of decision-making process. And uh, I think Barbara and Michael have made bolder, more surprising choices due to the fact that they're the ones running it. And, and that allows for, I think, a more fresh, unique and idiosyncratic um, character that doesn't become boring over time. Yeah. I'm curious how you felt on the last day when you were going home after your last day of shooting and even the next morning when you woke up realizing that you were no longer going to play James Bond. Um, I've been trying to come to terms with it before. I've been trying to make sense of it. Um, it I, you know, you asked me the question right at the top, what were the last 15 years like? And, you know, I, I, I kind of... It's a, they're, genuinely, I think it might take me 15 years to figure out because I, I, it's been such a huge part of my life, my professional life, but also my personal life as well. Um, and it, I, I felt so much emotion attached to each of the movies, this one and this one especially. Um, but it, it'll, be a, it'll be a big gaping hole. Um, 
but I'm incredibly satisfied and proud of the movies we made. And this one, um, I, I, I mean, I rarely say it about work I do, but this is as good as we could get it. This is as good as we could make. And I'm so proud and happy with the result and, and the way it looks and the way it feels and, and also the way people have reacted to it clearly, um, that it, it feels a good way to walk away. Thank you. Well. Thank you, Bong, so much. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for doing really this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Such an honor that you came and did you came and did this for us today. Thank you.